Hello everyone, this is Spoiler Lab, and today we will talk about the 2021 movie called Prisoners of the Ghost Land. This bank has a gum dispenser and a boy approaches it. He looks at what's inside and smiles. Suddenly, a man named Hero bursts into the building with a shotgun in his hands. He shouts everyone get on the ground, after which he heads to the cash register and demands to fill a bag with money. His partner Psycho points guns at the frightened visitors. The boy turns away from the machine and offers some chewing gum to Psycho. He gets a gun pointed at him. Several years pass. It's evening in Samurai Town. A girl named Susie, sitting on the balcony, gives someone a sound signal, noticing that the guard has left. Out of the alley comes her older sister named Bernice, who intends to escape from her tyrannical grandfather. Upon arriving at the car, Bernice tells his girlfriends that now they will do whatever they want. After some time, Bernice finds herself in a strange uninhabited city. She tries to convince herself that she is dreaming and that she is not really a prisoner. In Samurai Town, life goes on as usual. Children in colorful kimonos play soccer. The cops are bored and messing around. Hiro comes to his senses in prison. The governor is coming to town. His car is escorted by girls who sing a song about him. The ruler of the city gets out of the car and Hiro is brought to him. Chained. The townspeople mock him. According to the governor, some time ago, Hiro robbed a bank and killed many people in the process, including a boy with chewing gum in his hand. The governor says that his granddaughter Bernice, whom he loves very much, is missing. He wants to bring her home as soon as possible, and Hiro will have to help him. Susie jumps out of the car and asks not to bring her sister back, because their grandfather is truly evil. The guard gives the man a black leather suit to wear on the mission. The sheriff informs him that the highway leaving Samurai Town leads to Ghost Land, a place where it is better not to go. The governor says that's where Bernice is. As soon as the man zips up his suit, it activates small bombs located on his arms, genitals and neck. They work based on neurosensors, and if Hiro experiences anger or rage, the devices will read his emotions and detonate. The ruler of the city also informs him that if he manages to bring his granddaughter back alive and unharmed, his prison term will be paid off. On the sleeve of the suit is a panel with a microphone. The governor says that after three days, Bernice must say her name into the microphone, and Hiro will be given two more days to complete the mission. And if in five days he does not return to Samurai City, this will lead to the detonation of all the bombs. Hiro gets in his car. Time to go to Ghost Land. A man is driving through the wasteland, when suddenly a gang of samurais blocks his path. They have a prison bus with them, driven by a man with burnt skin. Hiro decides to go ahead. A second later, he lies next to a wrecked car near the burning ruins. This is where Ghost Land begins. Hiro is wheeled on a cart by people in strange rags. A local mechanic named Ratman runs up to him. He says that he can fix it, because they like to fix broken things. Hero tells him to screw off, and this leaves Ratman surprised, since he could see a little of himself in Hero. Next to him on a cart is one of the girls with whom Bernice ran away. Looking around, he sees that there are a lot of creepy dummies here. The hero is transported past one of the destroyed houses, on the wall of which a nuclear explosion is painted. When he is brought into the city, several residents in plastic suits stretch their rubber bands. Residents of Ghostland are always happy to welcome new guests. Hiro is pestered with questions about whether he wants to join them by a creepy long-haired girl. A certain man in a top hat flickers in the crowd. On the rubble of a building, a group of people are trying to hold on to a large clock. The man in charge of the process yells to everyone, that if the clock starts running, everything will explode again. An elderly preacher named Enoch comes up to Hiro. He says that the man has clearly gone astray and turned away from God. Hiro can no longer bear the madness that is taking place and informs those present that they are all crazy. Enoch asks what brings Hero to Ghost Land. He says that he came in search of a girl and as soon as he finds her, he will immediately leave the land. Enoch sadly announces that it is impossible to escape. Hero shows the townspeople a photo of Bernice, trying to find out if anyone has seen her. It turns out that many are familiar with her. A guy in the crowd remembers that she was last seen among the mannequin. And, there, Hero's search began. He takes turns approaching the mannequins and removes pieces of plastic from their faces. Some mannequins were hiding people. A man in a top hat bustles around him. He calls the plastic figures his masterpieces and says that they do not tolerate such treatment. The hero soon finds Bernice covered in mannequin body parts. He tells the girl that she will go with him, but she is silent and does not react to what is happening. Enoch tells him that Ghost Land has taken away her ability to speak. According to the preacher, Bernice must regain her voice herself if she wants to survive. Hero yells at her, but the bomb on his arm begins to react to the tone of his voice, so he has to calm down quickly. He shows the girl a photo in which she is with her friends and it pulls her out of her stupor. While Hero is leading Bernice, the people of the city ask him not to leave, because the ghosts are too strong. He takes the cart with the girl out of the city and refuels the car. From the speaker on the suit, the governor asks Bernice to say her name, but she doesn't respond to his request. 
Hiro grabs her by the neck and demands for her to say her name, but the bomb around her neck starts flashing red, forcing him to calm down. He removes the plastic from her and sees a scar from a bullet wound on her leg, which seems vaguely familiar. He forces the girl to drink some water. Having done this, he laughs with satisfaction and suddenly the bomb explodes in the area of his genitals. This causes him to lose consciousness. Hiro dreams of the same bank robbery. He sees a boy with the gum dispenser. Before running into the bank, he turns to the him and smiles. The bag of money is full and it's time to leave. The boy offers Psycho a cup with gum while he points a gun at him. The hero sees this and tries to prevent the child from being shot. The bullet hits the machine and all the gum spills out. They fight and Hero is knocked out. The guard notices this and shoots at Psycho, but misses. Psycho kills two guards, and then begins to shoot the people. At the end, the crazed maniac shoots the boy and he falls. The hero comes to his senses, sees the shot child and attacks Psycho. A fight breaks out between them. They fly through the glass doors of the bank and into the hands of the police who had already arrived. Hero raises his hands in surrender, while Psycho starts to shoot back. Taking advantage of the confusion of the cops, Hero tries to escape. The cops shoot Psycho. The bullets hit a woman in the chest and the leg of little Bernice, who was standing in the crowd of onlookers. Hero's eyes meet with hers as he runs past. Psycho is detained. The governor approaches the dead woman and the wounded Bernice. He strokes her head as she cries, knowing he will take her with him. Bernice wakes up in the present with tears running down her cheeks. The hero comes to his senses and approaches her. He asks for forgiveness for what he caused during the bank robbery. Suddenly, Bernice and Hero see the same squad of samurais, only this time they lead a group of zombies in prison uniforms. They try to grab them both. Hero yells for them to let him go and this leads to the detonation of another bomb, except on his elbow this time. He is left bleeding, but the bomb explosion kills a dozen zombies at once. The hero locks with the gaze of the burnt man sitting in a prison bus. But after a few seconds, the vehicle and the driver dissolve into the air. Hero finds himself near a destroyed building with a clock on it in a ghost town. Locals say that this place used to be a nuclear power station. It had the capability to power an entire empire, but also to destroy it. The problem was that the nuclear waste need to be transported out. One day, a prison bus, hijacked by a prisoner, crashed into a truck carrying hundreds of barrels of nuclear waste. This provoked an explosion. The entire city was burned to the ground and poisoned with radiation. And so Ghost Land was born. The hero asks how he could leave the town, to which he is told that Bernice will be able to help him. Both of them lie unconscious in the middle of the road. From a speaker, the governor asks Bernice to say her name, since the three days are almost up. She comes to her senses, crawls up to Hero and says her name into the microphone. Bernice then tries to bring Hero back to consciousness, but fails. She comes back to the ghost town and says that Hero is dead. Enoch is surprised that she managed to get her voice back. He also says that the creatures, led by the prison bus driver, attack everyone leaving and therefore it is impossible to escape ghost land. Soon Hero himself returns to the city, even though he could barely walk after the two explosions. He tells the townspeople that he has a new mission since he was granted life. In the town square, they try to stop the clock again. The man leading the process shouts that as long as the governor is alive, the clock must not be allowed to run, otherwise an explosion will occur again. The next day, Hero stands on the pedestal under the clock and loudly shouts that tomorrow they will all leave ghost land. The townspeople try to convince him that this is impossible, but he is sure that there is a way. Bernice supports him in his case. Hero and the townspeople come to the mechanic Ratman, who has a lot of old cars in the junkyard. He tells him that they need to start the cars back up and finally leave the town. Almost everyone, except for Enoch and a few other skeptics, unite in preparation to escape the terrible place. By evening, Ratman's workshop is lit up with hundreds of hanging lights, since the work on the cars is still in full swing. In the morning, Hero attaches a metal cast to his broken arm, which allows him to move his hand. The exodus from Ghost Land finally comes. A group of townspeople led by Hero and Bernice are walking towards the exit. Enemies are already waiting for them there. The burnt man who previously drove the prison bus takes off his glasses. It turns out that it is Psycho. Hero finally realizes that it was his fault Ghost Land was created, and that he was responsible for the explosion. He says that he will help the inhabitants of the city no matter what. Psycho tells Hero that the real villain in this story is the governor, and that all ghosts should become free. Hero, thanks his old friend and he disappears in a nuclear explosion. Bernice and Hero, to everyone's surprise, arrive at Samurai Town. The governor hugs his granddaughter, while she clearly is disgusted by him. He ignores Hero's request for a key from his suit. He then takes Bernice hostage. Suddenly, Susie runs up to a machine gun and begins to shoot all the governor's guards. She is wounded by a surviving guard. The remaining guards encircle Hero and Bernice. One cowboy shoots Bernice and they are separated. In the crowd, Hero sees a bank boy who smiles and runs away. So he understands that he needs to protect her. 
Hero starts a battle with the guards. The governor flees, while Bernice tries to take her wounded sister away from the battlefield. She is blocked by samurais and has to run back. Hero gets a sword and begins to fight his enemies even more fiercely. Bernice and her sister sit in an alley. Her sister is injured and she tries to calm her down. Bernice says that they will no longer be prisoners of their insane grandfather. She emerges from the alley and begins to fight the governor's warriors. Meanwhile, the governor comes back to his house just to find out that his maids had robbed him. He finds Susie in the alley and she tries to crawl away from him. She rips the suit key from his neck as Bernice points a gun at him. The old man begins to insult her. He tells her that he will find himself a new granddaughter to take her place. She remembers the very day she met the governor and shoots him several times. Bernice says she does it on behalf of all of his favorites. A few seconds before the detonation of Hero's suit, he opens it with a key, and deactivates the bombs. Bernice and Hero lock eyes. News of the death of the governor reaches the ruined city. All the citizens are happy. There is no longer any need to keep the clock, and time starts running again. When the hand reaches 12, the clock explodes. Now the prisoners of Ghostland are free. That is it for now. Thank you all for watching. What movie would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments. See you next time.